Welcome everybody. This is week two of Lent in a Box. And as some of you have already guessed, and some of you have no clue, we are in the fabulous children's library that Kathleen Lipsy, who's the director of children's ministries, does such a fab fabulous job of making accessible to all of our children. Um, we encourage you to come and utilize this room if you have children. It's very friendly. It's a warm, loving space. So Kat and I chose this space as our home for week two of Lent in a Box. And you know, we probably want to just like do little, you know, positions all around the church. Oh, yeah. Whoa, we can do like a traveling idea. Lent in a Box thing. Okay, so... I'm Marcia Tom Cayley, and I'm the Director of Educational Ministries, along with Catherine Cat Adams, the Director of Communications and Assistant Director of Children's Ministries. And we are very excited to see what Let in a Box holds for us for week two. Week two. Are take you ready? It, take it away, Cat. All right. So um, last week I failed to suggest that your uh, scripture and activity cards may be actual like cards. We just compiled them together in an easy to follow sheet for ourselves for this but you may actually have cards as opposed to a solid sheet of paper so week two you ready for this I'm all ready. right all right here we go some people seem to think that if you love and follow jesus that nothing bad will ever happen to you mm. and that you will not ever be sad this is not what the bible teaches God never promises that nothing bad will happen in our lives, but God does promise to be with us always. When we pray, we do not need to hide our feelings from God. In Psalm 139, verse 2, it says this about God. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You know what I'm thinking. God knows what we are thinking and feeling. And God still promises to be with us always. Mm -hmm. So that's the first introduction paragraph. Now we're asked to read Psalm 56, which is the other card. There's a card that should specifically be labeled Week 2 Scripture, Psalm 56. We're going to read verses 1 through 11, a Psalm of David. And this passage is... Reference from the NLT version of the Bible. Last week we did the message, this week NLT. Okay. Here we go. Do you want to read it? You go right okay. ahead. Oh God, have mercy on me, for people are hounding me. My foes attack me all day long. I am constantly hounded by those who slander me and many who are boldly attacking me. But when I am afraid... I will put my trust in you. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What can mere mor mortals do to me? They are always twisting what I say. They spend their days plotting to harm me. They come together to spy on me, watching my every step, eager to kill me. Don't let them get away with their wickedness. In your anger, O oh God, bring them down. You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. My enemies will retreat when I call to you for help. This I know, God is on my side. I praise God for what he has promised. Yes, I praise the Lord for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? Now, Marsha, just a little background after reading that. The devotional shares that some psalms tell us who the author is and what was happening when the psalm was written. Psalm 56 was written by David mm. during a time in his life when King Saul was trying to kill him. So he ran away to a place called Gath, where the Philistines, like the giant Goliath, mm -hmm. lived. While in Gath, David pretended he was crazy <laughs> because he was afraid the Philistines would kill him. You can read, we could read the whole story in 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 10 through 15. Um, we'll do that another day, maybe. Sure. 
but you can certainly add that as just an extra bonus to your devotional time at the mm -hmm. end mm -hmm. or heck even um even at this point just mm -hmm. take a stop it was it's only suggested five or six verses to read so it's a great addition mm -hmm. supplement to the to the devotional at hand uh so here we are to read 56 again mm -hmm. however this time now that we know the background behind it and and david being chased and and uh, Someone trying to yeah. someone trying to get him, basically. Um, we're gonna that'll change your perspective perhaps on the on the reading and and we're encouraged to try to imagine how we would feel if we were David. Do we feel, you know? And I'm not gonna answer. I'm gonna answer, ask these questions afterwards. Perfect. Okay. So here we go. Think about how you would feel if mm -hmm. you were David. Oh God, have mercy on me, for people are hounding me. My foes attack me all day long. I am constantly hounded by those who slander me, and many are boldly attacking me. But when I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? They are always twisting what I say. They spend their days plotting to harm me. They come together to spy on me, watching my every step, eager to kill me. Don't let them get away with their wickedness. In your anger, O God, bring them down. You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. My enemies will retreat when I call to you for help. This I know. God is on my side. I praise God for what he has promised. Yes, I praise the Lord for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? Amen. Okay, so what are some of the feelings that you felt while listening the second time? Well, first of if all, you I were David. I, if I was David, if you well, were a young man, a young man, a young shepherd boy a being chased. Shot. Okay. <laughs> Well, first of all, as an adult, I mean, unfortunately, I think we can all identify with the with David and with this psalm. I mean, I I know that I've had times in my life when I have certainly felt like this, and circumstances have led me to have this kind of a conversation with God, and I'm sure you have too. Um, and I think it's really really cool that we are in the children's library because as, as Catherine was reading the psalm for the first time it just came up to me that you know we, we read this as adults but if you were doing this exercise with your family with children which I hope you are what a wonderful opportunity you have to teach your children that their strength is in the Lord and and what an opportunity you have to teach them that these things will happen. We live in this world and this is going to happen. But they, unlike perhaps the grown-ups, will have tools in their toolbox already that they that will equip them to meet the giants in their lives, that will that will equip them to to recognize what might be happening in them in their lives as an opportunity to praise God in the circumstance and to say, you know, I'm going to stand on the rock just like Pastor Pete has been teaching for the last few weeks. So I would encourage you all to look at this from the perspective of equipping your children, um, giving them these kinds of tools so that they can grow to be like David. Um, and what a wonderful testimony to God for David to stop and just say, okay, you know, this is all happening. It's out of control. I know who controls my fate. I know who controls my destiny. I'm going to stop. I'm going to, I'm going to stop and I'm going to act as I know God would call me to act in this situation. Um, no, it's, it's really interesting because perspective from the first time you read it and perspective from the second time you read it, I just... I kept reliving circumstances in my own life, but knowing that this was written by David, who then went on to, to defeat Goliath when all the odds were against him. Um, in every situation in my life where I have allowed God to come in and, and orchestrate 
the ending, it has always turned out to be something that has, has ministered to me and has benefited my life. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's just really powerful. I think it's, it's really powerful. And, and the verse that really sticks out to me is where it said, and this is, I know this, this is going to sound like it was planned, but it's not. I, mean, I really mean this, that God keeps track of our tears mm -hmm. in a bottle. Mm -hmm. That's, that is amazing to me, that he knows every single tear I have ever cried. And he, he, he is the author and finisher of my faith and, and the person that will perhaps have a conversation with those that have caused those tears to come. I don't know. I'm not going to go down that road. But your thoughts? Um, I, too, agree with you that it's um, the power in the tears being collected in the bottle. I think I stuck a little bit more to you have recorded each one in your book. Same thing, same mm -hmm. concept, but... Mm -hmm. The, the thought that it was the thought that it was written down but I think just the holistic experience of um, David's cries at the beginning and then how the pri cries are transformed to the truth that he's standing on and what he knows and his trust and belief in God and what he has done in the past and how he is going to protect him and keep him safe mm -hmm. um, that he can stand on those promises um, is just powerful. And then at the end, he's able to turn all of the fear, all of the anxiety, mm -hmm. all of the um, negativity, frustration, scaredness. I already said fear. I guess that's the same thing. But mm -hmm. sadness, just mm -hmm. all the things from some, you know, the, the other people attacking him and then just landing on God's truth mm -hmm. and then praising him for, um, for that. And then that, of course, the final for the final question that's he's he asks early on as well. But what can mere mortals do to me? Right, right. How many right. times have we said that? Right. In our own days, our own lives. Mm -hmm. Really, what can what man can do, do to me? me when I've got a God <laughs> who's given me promises that I can stand on? Mm -hmm. And that's why the Bible is our instruction book. You know, the Bible tells us who God is, what His promises are. And gives us that foundation for how we are to stand and why we are to stand. Because we know that we know that we know who, who he is and what he is, has promised us. And if we look back on our own life, taking a different mm -hmm. step forward or a different step direction. If we look back on our own lives, we can see the places that God, some people call him God winks. Some people yep. call him God footprints. Yep. But the touches mm -hmm. um, where God's been and stepped in their lives and maneuvered the pieces mm -hmm. um, because he knew mm -hmm. more than we did. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, men. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> Cut! That's no, it. Okay, just kidding. Week. A little bit more. We want to get to the, the application part yes. of this experience. The activity. So, uh, David shows us that we can take all these feelings to God and that God treasures what we share through feelings uh, when we share our feelings through prayer. David says in, the, in Psalm 56, You keep track of all of my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in a bottle, as Marcia, in your bottle. Not just a bottle, your bottle. Your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. So God has a book for each of us. That is... Wow. Cool and a little frightening. <laughs> and we thought we had a lot of books here in the Children's Library. Wow. How amazing is this? Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. God reassures each of us that God loves us so much that God is collecting our tears. So, Marcia, the moment you have been waiting for, the do portion. Yep. In your box or your bag, find your bottle, cork, and sparkly, sparkly tear sequins. Now we realize that there are sequins of different shapes and sizes. Some may or may not, you're, we're going to jump ahead here, they may or may not fit in the mm -hmm. jar itself. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to bedazzle your jar <laughs> afterwards or before. Or feel... <laughs> feel completely welcome to get a bigger oh. jar 
These are what I call grown up tears. <laughs> and put those tears in a bigger jar. But anyway, I digress. So <clears throat> think of something that makes you feel sad, afraid, frustrated, or angry while you hold a tear sequin in your hand. So let's get one of these smaller ones. Mm -hmm. And think of something that makes you feel sad, afraid, frustrated, or angry. Okay? Now, you can either whisper it to God or tell God silently and then place your tear in the bottle. When everyone has put their tears in the bottle, put on the cork. You can certainly do more than one tear at a time, just for demonstrations purposes. We just put one tear in the bottle. But put the cork on it, and then we're going to pray together. Can we touch it? Oh, I think so. I think we can actually touch hands. <laughs> okay. We're going to hold hands. <laughs> and together, we're going to say, and this is um, from part of David's psalm, so the same thing David prayed to God. Um, yeah, right together. here. Okay. I'm going right. to read it. But, okay. Re, um, Ready? After three. <laughs> After three. Like okay, we learned last week. One, two, three. This, this I know, know God, God is on, on my side. side. Amen. Amen. Very good. And then you can um, keep this bottle and then the extra tears that fit that will fit inside. Again, you can take the, the big tears and find a bigger jar or you can bedazzle your smaller jar um, but you can keep the smaller ones and um, keep the, the bottle on a table maybe in your kitchen or on a desk that you have and you can add more tears throughout the week or the Lenten season or the year perhaps this is something you want to carry throughout the year um, whenever you need to feel uh, one of those feelings or those big emotions mm -hmm with God. And it's a great activity for children. You know, when your children are upset, it's a great distraction. It's a great um, physical example of, um, you know, having a child put a tear physically in the bottle and then as they get calmed down saying, you know, God, God knows that you're doing this. God's going to comfort you. Yeah. Yep. I like it. So that's, that's all for this week. Here from the Children's Library here at FPCLY. Marcia, thank you. Thank you, Kat. I know you missed the balloon activities, okay? Um, but I have it on good authority that they'll be back, so yeah. stay tuned. Yeah, there's a good chance it might be next week. <laughs> I mean, I haven't quite sneak peeked all the way ahead, but I see balloons somewhere. Excellent. So, um, anyway, that Keep should be fun. Keep the faith, Bye. We love fight you the fight, run the race. Does that sound like Peter or what? That sounds great. Truth. Bye, friends.